So one of the most controversial uh, subjects at uh, this week's conference is bound to be screening for prostate cancer. Is that the right thing to do or, or not? And I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Dr. Sigrid Carlson now, who's giving a state-of-the-art lecture on that topic. So, uh, Dr. Carlson, first of all, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for talking to us today. We appreciate that. So, so why is there such a, an argument over whether or not to screen for prostate cancer? That's a very good question. PSA screening is a never-ending controversy. There's always a debate. And I think the guidelines differ because of how people in the guideline groups interpret the ratio between harms and benefits of screening. So the USPSDF being the most extreme, recommending against PSA screening. And then you have the, the EAU guidelines saying you should start at 45, for instance. So, so what are the arguments for screening? What are the arguments against screening? So the arguments for is that we have evidence from the randomized trial that screening reduces prostate cancer mortality. And the arguments against is that the downstream consequences will cause harm to, to men being screened. So side effects from treatment, you know, impotence, incontinence, and so on and so forth. So people fear that more men will be harmed than will benefit. One of the things that you argue for in, in your papers, what I would call a, a, a common sense approach, is, is, is screening those people for whom it makes sense to, to screen. So how do you figure out who you should screen? So it's all about what we call risk stratified screening. So trying to pinpoint the men who would benefit the most. So focus screening on men at highest risk of life threatening disease. So, and that involves a plethora or a, a multivariate approach, including the age to start, whether you should biopsy or not, whether you should use reflex tests, MRIs and things that you can help um, guide your decision to screen and biopsy. One of the things I found very interesting in, in what you were writing about is you said that, that clearly we know in terms of ethnicity and, 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 and age, but, but you were also saying that getting an early PSA sort of baseline is important. Yes, so actually a baseline PSA provides superior risk stratification compared to both ethnicity and family history, which are common, well-known risk factors. So, but it's actually the, the strongest risk factor we know of today. So if you get a, a PSA in, in, at 45 or in midlife, and then using that PSA level to um, adjust the, the screening interval that you should follow, that can reduce your long-term risk of, of metastases. What about biopsies? When is that appropriate? So use, use your common sense. Don't, don't biopsy if it's not necessary. So first repeat the PSA because the PSA can fluctuate. It can be elevated because of, of not for prostate cancer, but for benign disease. So work up, um, perform urological workup for benign disease before you do the decision to biopsy. How important is patient consent in all this? Very important. I would say that's the the one only thing you should, the first and foremost, the most important thing you should think about. So there's evidence that one in four general practitioners, um, they do the PSA test without engaging in shared decision making and that's a no-no. So before you do PSA screening, have a discussion with the, with the man. A final question would be, how, how do we move forward from this? How do we actually start uh, making progress? It's a very good question. I think it's a matter of how do we change clinician behaviours and how do we change men's behaviours and we need to do a lot more on that front. Well, Dr Carlson, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.